TALAPRO2 trial was a phase three randomized trial comparing enzalutamide plus talazoparib versus enzalutamide plus placebo in patients who were in first line metastatic castor resistant prostate cancer setting. So this was the overall design of the TALAPRO2 trial. Patients were included if they had, they were, they had a newly diagnosed castor resistant metastatic prostate cancer, regardless of whether they had homologous recombination repair gene alterations or not. So this study prospectively looked for those mutations, but did not exclude the patients if they did not have the mutations. And as I said, radiographic progression free survival was the primary endpoint of this study. So, so far, everything is very similar to magnitude and the PROPEL trial, except the drug combination, which is different. These are enzalutamide plus talazoparib as opposed to, say, abiraterone plus niraparib or uh, olaparib. One other major difference was this trial did the prospective assessment of patients based on tissue as opposed to PROPEL trial, which did not do the prospective assessment. They went back and looked at who were HRR positive versus who, are, who were HRR negative. So I think that was a, that was a big difference. And this was all con included in the context of TALAPRO2 trial. It was included in the stratification factor, whether you are HRR positive or not versus you are HRR negative or you had unknown status. One other thing which we did, which was different from PROPEL trial was, we went back and looked at patients who are HRR negative based on tissue only profiling, and that is considered gold standard. So when you have patient, patients who were, who were HRR negative based on tissue testing, there's no denying with the current knowledge base we have that they were negative. So these are the different nuances between uh, difference, differences between the TALAPRO2 trial and the PROPEL trial. I'm not really comparing with magnitude trial. It's a different combination, abiraterone plus niraparib. And unfortunately, magnitude trial did not show any benefit in HRR negative patients. It only showed po positivity in HRR positive patients. And now that is a different trial. Why it did not show positivity? Was it a difference of the combination? What is the difference uh, between PARP inhibitors? Was it a different patient population? It's hard to tell because there are so many diff so different trials. But in the TALAPRO2 trial, really, what really matters is radiographic progression free survival, which was the primary endpoint as agreed by the regulatory authorities across the planet and against a very active control of enzalutamide. So the primary endpoint was met in a convincing fashion with a 37% reduction in risk of death. Primary endpoint was radiographic progression free survival in all comers. We reported on all comers. There is another cohort which was accrued after cohort one, only focusing on patients who are biomarker selected patients. And those data will be presented in a future meeting. So let's talk about the all comer population. It was positive trial, hence down, there is no doubt about it. But then you look at the HRR positive versus HRR negative patients. HRR paused in HRR positive patients, so patients who had HRR gene alterations in their tumors, there was a 54% reduction in risk of progression and death with a hazard ratio of 0.46, favoring the combination of enzalutamide plus talazoparib. If you look at the HRR negative patients, and we, in this analysis, we only looked at HRR negative patients by prospective tumor tissue profiling, there was a the hazard ratio was 0.66, which is 34% reduction in risk of progression or death. So, and on also beyond radiographic progression free survival, let's look at what endpoints are meaningful to our patients. Delay of chemotherapy, for example, or how they did in subs on subsequent therapies. So progression or death, not only on current therapy, but delay of progression or death on first subsequent antineoplastic therapy. If you look at deterioration in quality of life, global health status, it was delayed in the vitalazoparib. So patients were able to maintain the quality of life for longer time compared to the control arm. And again, I want to emphasize this is a really strong control arm, enzalutamide in first-line MCRPC, 
we saw the radiographic PFS to be close to 22 months on the control arm. So to beat that active arm with a, such a margin, I think that has to be taken into account. So the critiques we have heard uh, about the trial results and the results of other similar trials that we don't have the patient population in the first line MCRPC who have not been exposed to novel hormonal therapy such as enzalutamide or uh, ambiraterone. I must tell you that even in the US, until very recently, only a minority of patients have received novel hormonal therapy in castration sensitive metastatic prostate cancer setting. But then we also forget that not all patients with metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer progress from metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer. Many patients receive radiation therapy or they have surgery and with radiation therapy it's common to use androgen deprivation therapy for a limited duration. They do that and they do not recover their testosterone. And there are many patients we see in our regular practice who develop metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer after receiving limited duration androgen deprivation therapy in the past with radiation therapy. Or many patients develop castrate, metastatic castrate resistant disease after developing biochemical recurrence after surgery or radiation where they receive intermittent androgen deprivation therapy. And then they develop metastatic CRPC. So all those patients have never been exposed to a uh, novel hormonal therapy in the past and they all remain eligible for treatment with a novel hormonal therapy and eventually novel hormonal therapy with one of the PARP inhibitors, right? That's one criticism. Number two is lack of overall survival. I think we have to realize that any time we see a combination beating a very active arm, that is meaningful to our patients. So that's number one. Here, it, it was not placebo or a semi uh, uh, or underperforming control arm. This is a solid con control arm of enzalutamide where we saw RPS, RPFS of 22 months. But then one step beyond, that trial was not designed for overall survival. In dis uh, after discussion with regulatory authorities five, six years ago, trial was designed to answer the radiographic progression free survival as the primary endpoint, whether it is going to improve with the combination or not. So if trial is not designed for overall survival, why we are even asking? After five years, you are basically changing the rule of the game, right, or rules of the game. That's number two. Number three, we should be asking our patients. We should be presenting them the data and ask them if delaying chemotherapy, were prevent, preserving quality of life, delaying death or progression on subsequent therapies, are these meaningful endpoints to them? or they want to wait for overall survival. So those are the points I always would like to bring to your attention to, to at least push back on some of those critiques. <laughs>